Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Pakistan's deputy PM Dar advocates normalizing ties with India. Speaker of the Lower House of Parliament, defeating opposition Congress lawmaker K. Suresh. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi, who was declared the leader of the opposition, accompanied Modi as they congratulated Billa on his election. The rare moment of the Bonhomie was, however, short lived and chaos returned after the newly elected speaker mentioned the dark days of emergency in his address. When he asked the members to rise for two minutes silence to mark the 50th anniversary of the emergency of 1975, an uproar erupted from the opposition benches and the House had to be adjourned. The ruling NDA leaders later held demonstrations in the parliament premises against the emergency imposed by the then Congress government. <laughs> ये भी जरूरी है कि उनका खुद का ट्रैक रिकॉर्ड वो देखें संविधान की जिस तरह से धज्जियां उड़ाई गई हैं और जिस तरह से गला घोटा है इमरजेंसी के द्वारा और सबके संवैधानिक अधिकार जो है इन्होंने छीन लिए थे वो सब भी हम बार-बार दुनिया को याद दिलाएंगे ऑपोजिशन लीडर्स कंडेम द गवर्नमेंट एंड सेड इट शुड रादर फोकस ऑन करंट इश्यूज इंस्टेड ऑफ इमरजेंसी the the issue of emergency is done and dusted. We should talk about the 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 strangulation of institutions and collapse of institutions today, and we should talk about what is happening to press freedom, what is happening to a sitting chief minister who has been incarcerated pending trial. I mean, this is these are the things we should be talking about, and instead of always looking at something which happened about 45, 48 years ago. At least one terrorist was neutralized in an encounter in India's Jammu and Kashmir on Wednesday. The encounter began after terrorists opened fire at security forces, combing the area, prompting them to retaliate in Doda area of the Kashmir Valley. Since June 9th, there have been terror strikes in Riasi, Katua and Doda, in which at least 12 people have been killed. Security forces in recent days have intensified anti-terror operations and have announced a cash reward of rupees 5 lakhs each on four Pakistani terrorists believed to have infiltrated and operating in the region. And speaking at an event commemorating Africa Day, India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar emphasized the long-standing and profound ties between India and Africa. He expressed India's commitment to fostering a mutually beneficial and respectful relationship embodying the ethos of being a Vishwabandhu. In his remarks, Jay Shankar highlighted the importance of African nations' involvement in global initiatives such as the International Solar Alliance, the Global Biofuel Alliance and the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure. He also extended an invitation to African countries to join the International Big Cat Alliance. We value the participation of African nations in the International Solar Alliance, the Global Biofuel Alliance and the Coalition for a Disaster Resilient Infrastructure. We are thankful to Africa for helping us to create our bio, recreate our biodiversity. And I take this opportunity to invite African countries to join us in the International Big Cat Alliance. Pakistan's Deputy Prime Minister Ishak Dar on Tuesday called for normalization of relations with India as he expressed Islamabad's desire for holding dialogue. Speaking Thank during you. an event at a think tank, Dar, who holds the portfolio of foreign minister, said that Pakistan wants good neighborly relations with India on the basis of mutual respect and sovereign equality. 
He urged to break from debilitating cycle of conflict and said New Delhi and Islamabad owe to the people of South Asia to prioritize cooperation over discord. Ties have been frozen since India ended the special status of Jammu and Kashmir in 2019 and split it into two federally administered territories. However, in recent months, leaders of the ruling PMLN, including former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, have called for dialogue. While comments from Dar are the first formal expression of Islamabad's policy towards India, New Delhi has maintained talks can only be possible if the terrorism issue is at the center of the conversation. In recent days, India has blamed Pakistan for a spate of terrorist attacks that killed at least 12 people and injured dozens in Kashmir Valley. And the Taliban's acting foreign minister, Amir Khan Muttaki, called Afghanistan cricket team captain Rashid Khan to offer congratulations after the team's dramatic eight-run victory over Bangladesh, winning them a place for the first time in the semi-finals of the 2020 World Cup. Muttaki said, Afghans are excelling in all fields. We must keep sports separate from politics. Your victory has made everyone happy. You are a great inspiration for the youth. Cricket represents a rare bright spot for many Afghans and has also been embraced by the Taliban administration, though they do not allow women to play. The country is suffering after a series of natural disasters came on top of an economic crisis exacerbated by international restrictions on the banking sector and a drop in aid since the Taliban took over and restricted women's education and movement. Moving on, Bangladeshi residents near the border with Myanmar have expressed they are living in tense situation as fighting has intensified between Myanmar's ruling UNTA and separatist forces in the region. A report. Bangladeshis living along the country's border with Myanmar's Rakhine state have said that life has become tense and frightful after fighting intensified between Myanmar's ruling junta and separatist forces. Conflict in Rakhine has flared after a ceasefire between the Arakan army, one of Myanmar's most powerful ethnic armies, and the Myanmar junta broke down late last year. Myanmar has deployed warships around Bangladesh. St. Martin's Island to target the Arakan army, which is reportedly approaching Sitwe, the capital of Rakhine. <laughs> Bangladeshis in the border villages said regular skirmishes with bombing and shelling in the Rakhine have shaken the fishing village community. Villagers are fearful that they will soon have to face a new influx of Rohingya refugees when the current two-month fishing embargo ends in July, giving poor Bangladeshi fishermen the opportunity to smuggle escaping refugees in exchange for some quick cash. The Sri Lankan Navy on Tuesday said that they had arrested at least 10 Indian fishermen and reported the death of one of their naval sailors during an operation. The Navy said over 200 Indian fishermen and 27 trawlers have been seized for illegal fishing in the country's waters so far this year. This incident came two days after the Sri Lanka Navy arrested 22 Indian fishermen for alleged poaching. Following this, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M.K. Stalin wrote a letter to Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar urging him to secure their release. India and Sri Lanka share an expansive oceanic border without any perceptible demarcation. Fishermen from both the countries frequently stray into each other's territory while netting their catch and end up spending years in jails. This year alone, more than 200 Indian fishermen have been apprehended for illegal fishing. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.